Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna be checking out a cool little mask transition that I found out while playing with the opacity tab. This will allow you to create custom and dynamic transitions to all of your clips. There are a lot of parameters that we can adjust to customize our transition to our own desire and preference. We're gonna get right into this and work with these four clips right here. The first step is very simple. Find a spot that you want to transition into another clip. The transition works best when you only use about five frames. This is because it's more of a glitch style transition. So to do five frames, all you have to do is hold shift and hit the right arrow key once. Whenever you hit that once, it'll jump you five frames. Now, the reason why we went right is because we want to drag our first video clip up and then drag that to the right. And this is because we want five frames in this direction. If you have audio layers, all you have to do is right click and click on unlink. That way you can manipulate the video without corrupting the audio. And now all we wanna do is hit C on our keyboard and make a cut right there at that video layer. So once your five frame video layer is selected, we're actually only gonna be working with the opacity tab under the effects controls. Under the opacity tab, you can create an ellipse mask, you can create a four point polygon mask, or you can use the free draw bezier tool. You can also adjust the opacity as well as changing the blend mode either to like screen or something like hard light as well to create some interesting dynamic effects. For now, we're just gonna keep everything to normal. What we're gonna do is click the up arrow and that'll bring us to the beginning of our transition. Now that we have this, I'm gonna click on our top video layer and select the create four polygon point mask. This will create a mask just like this that we can manipulate even further. The first section is the mask path and this represents the blue edges. Wherever we drag this is technically the mask path. The next header is mask feather and if we drag this up to the right, it'll feather out our image to make it blend more. Mask opacity adjusts the opacity of our mask and mask expansion actually increases or decreases the size of our mask. Keep in mind that you can layer these effects to get even more interesting transitions. So now that we understand what we can manipulate, I wanna show you how I'm gonna actually create a transition. Keep in mind, we're coming in from this clip right here into this clip of a guy standing on top of an airplane. Now we already created the mask, so all we have to do is manipulate it. I like putting on the safe margin so I can use that as a reference when I'm creating these masks. All you have to do is click the safe margins down here. If you don't see that, click the plus sign and drag on safe margins. For this mask, I wanna make sure we're at the very beginning by clicking the up arrow or dragging your playhead to the beginning of your transition. Select your top video and go over to mask. Click the toggle animation button to the left of mask path. You'll see that we don't see these blue lines or blue edges. All we have to do is select the mask and they will appear again. I'm gonna drag the first one down to the middle edge right there. This left one I'm gonna drag over here. You notice that Premiere will start to move a little bit slower because I'm dealing with a lot of pixels on a 4K timeline. So you might have to adjust the playback resolution down here to the right to a quarter or an eighth. So now that we have our first frame, let's click the right arrow and move to the right once. Now we can start to adjust the next frame. I'm gonna drag this down here to the bottom and this one down to the bottom as well to create a triangle. Click the right arrow key and then I'm gonna adjust this mask one more time. Keep in mind that if I drag these edges out to the right, they won't become visible anymore and I won't be able to click on them to drag them around. This is because our program window is too large. So down here, all we have to do is select the zoom level and pick a size that will allow us to see out further. 10% normally works when you wanna bring it back in. For this next one, I'm gonna drag it around and I'm gonna drag around these edges till the full image is in there. I'm gonna go to the right again. You can copy any mask path that you previously done. Hold Alt on the keyboard and click and drag that around to copy that. So now if we scrub through, you can start to see our transition and what it's doing. So I'm gonna bring this back into 50% and then create one more final mask path. And if we go over one final time, you'll see that it actually transitioned into our video. If we play back through this, let's see what it looks like. So as you just saw, that was pretty fast and effective. The cool thing about this is now we can go in and adjust all the parameters. If we want to increase the mask feather to make it a softer transition, that looks like this. If we don't like what one of the masks looks like, we can adjust it. 
And again, you can also play around with mask expansion. If I want to adjust the mask expansion on the final mask clip, I need to create a normal keyframe before the clip. Because if I adjust this keyframe right at the end, it's going to adjust it for everything. Now I can adjust my final keyframe and drag it smaller if I wanted to. So it looks like this. Another cool thing you can do with the mask is actually just use rectangles. So then you can get some flickering effects. So I'm going to create one right here. So I can hold shift when I'm dragging this around so it holds it on the horizontal and vertical axes. Let's hit the right arrow key and move this over to this side. Hit the right arrow key, move this over there. Hit the right arrow key, move this right back to the beginning. And hit the right arrow key one more time and move it off to the edge. So that was a nice little flicker ripple effect that we just created. Now let's play with the mask expansion. So let's toggle the mask expansion right here. Go one frame over, see what it looks like. Expand that out a little bit and right there. And then let's expand that down to really thin and go to the right and expand that out a little bit bigger. And the final one, let's expand that out about halfway. And let's see what this looks like now. Cool. Now with the mask that we just created, it looks really awesome. I want you guys to keep in mind that you can also click inverted to change the mask. All inverted does is flips the entire thing. So now it looks like this. We can play around with the blend mode. So let's check it on overlay, see what that looks like. Nice, but not as effective. Let's go to difference and do one final one of color dodge. If we enjoyed that transition and we liked what we saw, all we have to do is click on opacity, right click and click on save preset and name it whatever we want. Make sure scale is selected and click OK. Whenever we create this transition again in the future, all we have to do is click and drag our preset that we just created onto our clip. One final technique that I want to show you guys real quick is that you can use two masks on a singular image. So if I click create four polygon mask twice, now I have two separate areas that I can work with. I want to also show you that if I make one of my masks bigger and I drag my second mask in the center of it, all I have to do is click inverted on my first mask. That'll allow me to create masks that are inside of each other. So now when I manipulate this mask, I can get some really interesting effects. Well, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you did, click that thumbs up and subscribe. So I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. And be on the lookout for a new preset pack coming that is including a bunch of transitions like this. I'll see you guys next time.